This video will be an introduction to the urinary system. And you're looking at Ralph Wiggum there from The Simpsons. The functions of the urinary system are to maintain homeostasis. Remember, homeostasis is a constant internal environment. And it does that by regulating salt concentrations, by regulating pH and blood volume, and therefore blood pressure. Also removing nitrogenous wastes and other waste products. Other waste products might be like um, medications and stuff. So when I say salt, I mean sodium ions, chloride ions, um, potassium ions, electrolytes like that. Let's look at some of the major organs in the urinary system. We have the kidney, which you know filters blood and ultimately produces urine. We have ureters. The ureter um, is a tube that allows urine to travel from the kidneys to the bladder. Then we have the urinary bladder where urine is stored. And then lastly, we have the urethra. The urethra expels urine outside the body. And before we move along, um, let's just look at the renal artery and renal vein. So this is the abdominal aorta. Blood is pumped into the kidney through the renal artery, and then blood leaves the kidney through the renal vein. Now there's a variety of structures in the kidney we want to be aware of. What you should notice right away is there's sort of two main divisions. We have this outer division here called the renal cortex that runs along the whole perimeter. And then right deep to the renal cortex, we have the renal medulla. That's this interior portion. Um, and they're made of renal pyramids. So this would be a renal pyramid. Here's another renal pyramid. Now this is where urine is produced, where blood is filtered and urine is produced. So we are going to have a whole video on how blood is filtered and how urine is produced, and it's going to involve the nephron. You can see here's a single nephron right here. And the nephrons, there's literally millions of them in your kidneys, and they're located both within the cortex and in the medulla. In fact, um, the medulla gets its, see how the medulla is striated? It gets that striated appearance from these tubes that you're looking at. But either way, urine is, is produced here in these renal pyramids and then is deposited or released at these things called minor calyces. Um, so here's a minor calyx. Here's another minor calyx. Where, where the minor calyces come together, they sort of make a larger um, opening called a, a major calyx. So this would be a minor calyx, another minor calyx. This would be a major calyx here. A renal column. A renal column is the area in between a renal pyramids. So here's a renal column and there's a renal column. The renal pelvis, that's where all these major calyces drain. They drain into this portion called the renal pelvis. And then the renal papilla, um, the renal papilla is this portion of the renal pyramid. Remember, this is the renal pyramid. And then the renal pelvis becomes the ureter. All right, let's continue to look at the kidney um, with an actual specimen here. So you're looking at a frontal section or a coronal section. You're looking at a posterior view. We know it's the posterior view because the ureter runs posterior to the renal artery and vein. So this is the cortex. And then right deep to the cortex, we have the medulla. And then here's a renal column. There's a renal column. This would be like a renal papilla here. This is a minor calyx, another minor calyx, and then they come together to make a major calyx. And then remember where these major calyces um, collect together, or come together, that makes a renal pelvis, and the renal pelvis then turns into the ureter. Speaking of ureter, here's the ureter right here. It connects the kidney to the bladder, and that conveys urine all the way down. And the ureter begins at the funnel-shaped renal pelvis. You already saw this. So here's the funnel-shaped renal pelvis. He's got sort of a funnel appearance. So this is the beginning of the ureter. And then the distal end empties into the bladder. The ureter transports urine by peristalsis. That's important to know. Just like we talked about how you could um, 
drink water or eat while you're upside down on your head. The same thing is true of produce, producing urine. You can produce urine and have urine travel to the bladder even if you're standing on your head. So it's not gravity that um, allows the urine to flow. It's peristalsis that pushes it down into the bladder. Um, here's a micrograph showing the histology of the ureter. You can't see it too well, but this would be um, transitional epithelium designed to expand or stretch. And then this is uh, muscles here. These are the muscles that would um, contract and move urine down by peristalsis. All right, let's look at the bladder now. The bladder is hollow and distensible. Distensible means it's allowed to expand. So when your bladder fills with urine, it gets distended. It's a muscular organ and it lies at the, in the pelvic cavity, right at the, at the pelvic floor. And that of course stores urine and then secretes it through the urethra, that's right here. So here's a section through the bladder. You're looking at, um, this is an anterior view here. You're looking at the interior of the bladder. And this is a posterior view of the bladder. Notice that the ureters um, actually um, puncture through the wall of the bladder in the posterior of the bladder. So you can see that here, this ureter is in the back of the bladder or the posterior, and it punctures through at these openings right here. These openings, um, are actually like slits because the ureter punctures through at like an oblique angle. So when the muscles of the bladder start to contract, urine is actually forced through the urethra and not back up into the ureter and doesn't back up into the kidney. Speaking of your bladder contracting, that's done by the detrusor muscle. There's a few layers here, I think three layers, but um, we'll just know it as smooth muscle that contracts when your bladder gets um, full of urine. There's something called the internal urethral sphincter. That's right here. That is involuntary, meaning that will relax on its own. And then there's also the external urethral sphincter, which really isn't shown here, but it would be down here in this region. We're gonna look at that on the next slide. As long as we're on the slide, we might as well notice that we're looking at the male bladder here because this is the prostate gland and the, this is the prostate gland here too. The urethra um, travels right through the middle of the prostate gland. Here's bladder epithelium right here. It's transitional epithelium. Notice the like the bubble type shape. Remember this is um, specialized for stretching. Now if you look at um, a slide of this, um, this is the detrusor muscle. Notice the um, smooth muscle fibers here. This is some uh, probably dense and loose connective tissue. And then as we zoom in, you should be able to see the transitional epithelium fairly well. There we are, see the, the bubble-like appearance? That's transitional epithelium designed to stretch as your bladder distends. All right, let's talk about micturition or urination. That's the process of expelling urine from the bladder. It's actually quite complex. We'll just look at some of the basics here. Uh, urination is a reflex. So it's done largely involuntarily. Remember reflexes typically arc in the spinal cord. That's what we see here. When the bladder begins to fill, so once you get approximately like 150 or 200 milliliters in the bladder, the bladder starts to stretch and that stimulates stretch receptors in the wall of the bladder. And then when that happens, an impulse is carried to the spinal cord. Turns out also involves um, the pons and the hypothalamus. We talked about how the hypothalamus governs a lot of autonomic or involuntary responses. It's involved with urination as well. So an impulse is carried to the spinal cord. And then after that, um, a, mo a motor impulse is sent. And then you have involuntary contraction of the detrusor muscle. Remember that the detrusor muscle was the muscle that makes up the wall of the bladder. So that detrusor muscle contracts and it also relaxes the internal urethral sphincter. So the bladder begins to contract and the sphincter, which is holding the, holding the urine in, begins to relax. Fortunately, you have that external urethral sphincter and that is under voluntary control for most uh, healthy adults.
All right. The last thing we're going to look at is the urethra. Notice the female urethra, which is on the right, is only about an inch or an inch and a half. And the male urethra is between seven and eight inches. So this is, um, this is an instance where um, there's anatomical differences between the male and the female, and that contributes to um, clinical significance here. So this is where urine is expelled. Notice this is right anterior to the vagina and the uterus. And then this is your rectum and anus, which is right posterior to that. So a woman has a urethra or urethral opening that's in close proximity um, to the feces that are exiting your anus there. And because of that, um, E. coli, remember that's the one of the primary bacterial constituents of feces, E. coli is able to migrate easily up through the urethra and um, colonize the bladder here, and that creates a urinary tract infection or a bladder infection. For a male, of course, um, a male is releasing feces here, and that's nowhere um, close to the urethra. So the male has an advantage here in the sense that he's less susceptible to bladder infections. I guess on the inverse side of that, um, if, a, if, if the bladder needs to be scoped, whether it be for you know, bladder cancer or, or some other suspected pathology, um, the male is at a distinct disadvantage um, just simply due, the, to, due to the discomfort that the camera um, would bring. Um, notice again, here's the bladder, um, here's the ureter, the bladder empties in, into the urethra, and this is the prostate gland you're looking at. This is the external urethral sphincter, so you can control this voluntarily. So when you have the urge to urinate, um, you can relax this muscle and urine can flow out. On the female anatomy, um, similar thing, we have the external urethral sphincter right here.